Hello everyone and welcome to um, the seventh part of our Christmas Advent story. Just to remind you, the end of chapter six, Winston had just seen that beautiful um, doll's house. Um, and today, let's see what happens. This chapter is called The Jolly Holiday Travel Agents. The shop Winston had actually been looking for was a little further down the road where Mistletoe Street turned and all the buildings started to wriggle down a bit of a hill. It was a small, skinny shop that was wedged between a pie shop. The smell of warm pastry wafting out from under the front door was almost too much for Winston. And a wool shop, which had a funny display in the window of clockwork sheep in snazzy woolen jumpers leaping over knitted parcels. But what Winston was most interested in now stood before him and he read the words painted above the window carefully. The Jolly Holiday Travel Agents and underneath, say, bonjour, ciao, hola, hey, hey, to the whole wide world. Yes, this was definitely the place Winston needed if he was going to find out exactly where the North Pole was and how best to get there. Winston scampered closer and peered carefully at all the photographs that were hanging in the window. Each one was different. And as Winston studied them, he tried to remember everything he had heard about the North Pole on the radio. It was apparently very, very cold and snowy. Father Christmas's only neighbours would be polar bears. <gasps> Winston could feel a nervous, wiggly, jiggly sort of feeling starting to flutter in his tummy. None of the pictures showed anywhere that looked right. All the photographs were of hot, sunny places. There were photos of boats sailing past sandy beaches and pictures of cities full of towering buildings that reached up into the sky. There was no snow anywhere. What am I going to do, he thought to himself. His cheeks were glowing red a little as a little wave of worry started to rise from the tips of his toes all the way up to his ears. He noticed that each of the pictures had a thin strand of gold thread attached to it, which stretched across the window to a large model globe in the middle of the scene. The thread showed you where each of the exotic places shown in the pictures was located on the globe. Winston was just thinking that none of that helped him very much when he noticed two white patches on the globe, one at the bottom and one at the very top. White, Winston thought, like the snow all around him. I wonder, he squeaked himself, and a little burst of excitement went off in his chest like a firework. He dashed over to the drain pipe and stashed the envelope carefully behind it. And he clambered up the metal pipe and, wiggling just for a second to judge the distant right, leaped up onto the window ledge. When he got to the middle, he wiped away a little patch of fog caused by his breath and he peered in at the globe. The splodge of white at the bottom said Antarctica and under that, South Pole. Winston's nose waggled excitedly. If the South Pole was at the bottom, he would bet his whiskers on the other patch of white being the North Pole. Of course, he thought he'd better just check. With a nimble leap, Winston managed to jump up and grab hold of the leading between the panes of glass. He poured himself up onto it, wobbling slightly, as there wasn't really enough room for him to stand properly. And with another leap and a heave, he was standing on the next length of the leading, where he was able to look down to the globe. Yippee! squeaked Winston when his eyes had darted across the white continent and seen what was written there. The Arctic and the North Pole. He'd found it. But his excitement was short-lived. It was an awfully long way away. A very long way away indeed. How would he, with his tiny paws, travel all that distance before midnight? His brain was racing. He was trying to think of a solution to this problem when he heard a noise coming from behind him. His body stiffened against the glass and his ears twitched nervously. Then a loud voice said, what on earth do you think you're doing? Winston was so surprised that his little feet slipped this way and that 
along an icy window leading, and his tiny arms windmilled wildly as he tried to bang, and his paws grabbed madly at the glass, but it was no use. With a loud startled squeak, Winston slipped and found himself falling backwards through the chilly air and landed ears deep in the snow below. That's the end of chapter seven. Wait for the next instalment tomorrow. Bye-bye.